other day now, come on. Dear Ma and Pa, the Bible says, for everything there is a season. And after two years of marriage, the time has finally come for Willie and me to put down roots on a ranch of our own. We left the wagon train today and are heading out alone through desolate and beautiful country. It's not green like the farm, we're golden. As you can tell by my handwriting, the way is pretty bumpy. Willie's worried we got a late start leaving Denver. August is not a good month to start up a ranch. I did get a full year of teaching in, and we can use the money. We also may be starting up something else. Namely, your first grandchild. I haven't told Willie yet. He's got so much on his mind already. There will be plenty of time to tell him after we've settled. For everything, there's a season. Willie, can you pull up for a minute? I'm bound to get sick pitching around in that wagon. You know, there's still a couple of hours left at daylight. We can keep going if you want. No, that's okay. I'm we'll getting an early start in the morning. Come on. I'll help you get supper started. Looks like they're alone, Trent. Just out for a little romantic ride in the country. Shouldn't we do a roundabout, make sure they ain't part of a wagon train or something? Could be a hot bath, a bottle of whiskey, and a woman. One out of three ain't bad. What do you say? Enough talk. Let's make me rich today. Sawbuster ties his gun down. So do we. Yeah, but your average rancher don't tie his gun down, Mason. That's the point. What do you say, Trent? Some other time, maybe. <laughs> Willie, bring some forks when you come. Folks, thank you, sir. Frank Taylorson, proud owner of the greatest general store in this parts. Oh, Missy LaHaye, and this is my husband, Willie. Pleasure. You folks just passing through? 
figuring on staying. Oh, well, that's good news to Tetsford Junction. <laughs> well, if you could just show us the land offices, Mr. Taylorson. Yes, sir. About two doors down. Goodbye. This is the track you'll be homesteading. Just north of the McLean place. See? There's the main creek threading through the middle. With plenty of branches for the cattle to water. It's a good place to start a family. Here's the deed. I wish you folks the very best of luck. Many come, not many last. We'll last. With hard work and a lot of prayer. Next to marrying you, it's the happiest day of my life. Our life. Missy LeHay, as God is my witness, I swear to work harder than any man to build you a home on this land. We'll raise a family and watch generations after generations of LeHays thrive and prosper. Well, Willie, I have something to say about that. <laughs> I didn't see nothing, Mr. Owens. <laughs> Chicken thieves start early in these parts. That's the first child I've seen. Yep. Glad you brought all those books just for that one. I'm sure there are more. First, the ranch. Then teaching. Then everything else. Everything else? You know what I mean. What were you going to tell me before that chicken butted in? Just that, uh... And I'm happy too, Willie. Hello, young man. Howdy. I'm Missy LaHaye. What's your name? Jeff Huff, ma'am. How old are you, Jeff Huff? Twelve years old, ma'am. Did you catch that chicken? No. I got distracted by your smooching. <laughs> sorry, ma'am. Well, I'm sorry we caused you to lose your chicken. Oh, uh, weren't mine anyway. Just fooling around. Sonny. Take it easy, Mason. Why you and I go in and have a drink? Sonny. You can go play. Don't go embarrassing me like that. Sorry, Sonny. Got you something. Easy there, Jeff. If that widow feeds you, I pay her good money. I don't like her there, Sonny. I want to go with you. Yeah, well, you can't. I'd have told you that a hundred times. Whoa.
I'll build your house a lot better than that one. Oh, no. Really, this house is just fine. Let's go take a look. Humble as it may be, sweetheart, this is the first home of our own that we've ever had. Fireplace. My cooking can't get any worse than it is right now. Lord, bless this house and all who enter. Amen. Dearest family, I miss you and the small creature comforts. Sometimes I can almost hear your voices in the soft prairie wind. I worry about Willie. He works with a ferocity that sometimes scares me. He's so concerned we won't be ready for winter. I've still not found the right time to tell him about the baby. Willie and I went riding over our land. What a beautiful country the Lord has made. Just the other day, we saw Indians on our ridgeline. Willie is very concerned for my safety, though there hasn't been any Indian attacks in years in these parts. Willie and I are sending you a treasure map to our hard-earned savings, which we just buried in the wilds of our new ranch. I certainly hope you never need to use it. And Willie doesn't trust banks out here. Then, this is a strange and wild place. I've been punching cattle over three years, Mr. LaHaye. I was experienced as some, but more than others. Where are you hail from, Henry? What does that matter? I'm here now. All right. I suppose it's none of my business anyway. No offense. None taken. If. You give me a job.
How? Uh, I'm Missy LaHaye. My husband and I uh, homestead this place. Uh, we raise uh, cattle. This... How? What is that supposed to mean? You speak English. That's what they tell me. I'm Miriam Red Hawk McLean. Married to Sean McLean. We homestead the next track to the south of here. Oh, we're neighbors. Mm -hmm. Yes, ma'am. Oh. Please. Please come in. <laughs> well, I don't understand, Mr. Just Scotty's farm. Been cowboying since I was a kid. I've done everything there is to do. Well, how come you haven't been hired by one of the big outfits? I can't use this no more, so most people think I'm washed up. But I learned to get by with my left. You take me on, Mr. LaHaye. I won't let you down. Get yourself a job. <laughs> uh, I'm just getting started. I'm trying to make this place into a home. Please, sit. I think I have one last jar of strawberry preserves that I've been saving for just such an occasion. Please, here. Now, this here is a County Fair blue ribbon winner. Mmm. Mmm. This is very good. You must teach me how to make this. Oh, my mother made it. I'm not a very good cook. When I was growing up, I mostly helped out my pa. Riding horses, plowing the field, tending to the chickens. Then you will do very well here. Many women who come here are soft. They don't know how to do these things. You do. Still, I feel that my husband would prefer a good meal. <laughs> I brought you some things. It is too late to start a garden this year, so corn, potatoes, beets. Oh, thank you, Miriam. We are our neighbors. The last family was here. Well, they could have asked us for more help, but I think they feared my Shoshone ways. Oh, well, my husband and I will be grateful for whatever help we can get. Um, what is in there? The secret to flaky biscuits. Pig lard. Oh, oh, excuse me. Sorry, excuse me, sorry. What do you think about these? Sabrina. Would you be Mr. LaHaye? I would. Well, I am Finan Ders. I would like job service, please. Uh, what kind of foreigner is you, son? I come from Norway on boat to find adventure in the big wide open spaces. Well, you have any experience around cattle? No, sir. But well, I am big, strong, one horse. Well, Finan is from Norway. This will be strictly trial basis. Hope you learn fast. Don't worry, Mr. Lahey. I learned good and fast. You betcha. Yeah. Good girl. The boys will love the jam. And so will their pa. Sure I can't give you any biscuits? No. <laughs> Thank you, though. <laughs> well, maybe next time I'll make them with the pig lard. <laughs> I don't fretch. When you're ready to bring this little one into the world, I will be there. I've delivered many babies, 
Oh, Miriam, thank you. I'll bring some books for the boys. Good. I don't want them growing up illiterate like their pa. Very nice to meet you, neighbor. You too. Here comes trouble. I, uh, heard you were hiring some cowpokes. Jobs are filled. Oh, there's a bunch you hired. You're really scratching the bottom of the barrel. Too bad you just couldn't have waited a bit. Hired some real men. So where would I find these real men? Me. Me and my boys. Not only can we rope and ride, most important, we can shoot. Hey, mister. I bet you can't shoot worth nothing. Why don't I start with you? Trent, come on. Let's get out of here. <laughs> well, we got some cows to drive. So watch them. And do likewise. You betcha, boss. Mr. LaHaye, how would you feel about hiring on another broke-down old cowboy? Well, I suppose I wouldn't feel so good about that, Mr. My name is Cookie. You're a cook. <laughs> You're real quick. Afraid I can't afford another hand right now. Strictly on a trial basis. <laughs> My dearest Missy, the prospect of being grandparents fills us with such joy and pride. I can only imagine how happy you must be. And by now, I'm sure you've shared the happy news with that hard-working son-in-law of mine. I can still remember the exact moment when your mother told me about you. I was standing in the kitchen eating breakfast, and most of all, I remember how radiant your mother looked when she told me. And as for you, my strong daughter, I hope you are feeling well and that it is an easy pregnancy for you. I love you, daughter. wife and my initial. Fine idea. Including her. 
Oh, this would be nothing without her. Therefore, a man shall leave his father and mother, cleave to his wife. They shall be as one. Genesis. You know your Bible. Yes. Yes, could be material. Anyway, I'm happy for you. A good marriage, that's... something to be treasured. Speaking from experience? Scotty! Right. Ready for another one? Where are you off to? I'm taking some books to our neighbors from the plains. Be back in a couple of hours. She sure is a better rider than I am. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Buffalo. It ain't done by white men neither. White men only take the pelt. Indians use just about everything the hide, the meat, the horns, some of the bones. And Missy and I saw some Indians riding south last week. And all this beef is better than this buffalo meat any day. Well, there ain't been Indian trouble in these parts for quite a while. Well, let's tell the boys. wings to fly. Go spell Scotty. There's some sick cows that need to be brought in. Yes, boss. Uh, Mrs. LaHaye in the house? No, sir. She up and took some books over to your neighbors to McLean. Oh, she sure can ride. You are safe here, Mrs. Lay. I'm so sorry. And I ain't I need you. Putting a scare into this poor woman. You were just having a little fun. You listen to Sharp Claw. Is it trouble you want for us? My apologies, Mrs. Lay. You see, this, this is my brother, Sharpclaw. I give you my word, Mrs. LaHaye, my young hunters meant no harm except to laugh at your expense. Their proper behavior when they saw you should have been to make sure that you arrived at your destination safely, especially a woman in your condition. This is my husband, Sean. It's a pleasure to meet you, madam. Nice meeting you. And Robert and Bruce. Hello, boys. Please.
Can we take our books? Yes, they're yours. Children, these are the same books used in almost every school in America. Who was this McGuffey? An Ohio schoolmaster who felt a burden from God to teach all American children how to read. American children? Yes, sir. And that includes those whom our late President Lincoln called Native American. Thank you, Mrs. LaHaye. Now, you all have your books. All you men and children out. We have women's business to talk about. Willie, this is Miriam and her husband, Sean, and her brother, Sharpclaw. We're on our way to the mountains. We intend only to take some buffalo. I have given strict orders that no cattle are to be harmed, and those orders will be obeyed. Are you ready to go home, Missy? <sighs> Mr. McLean? Mrs. McLean? Sharp claw? Goodbye. Thank you. Goodbye. Thank you. What you were doing, Missy? I was taking some McGuffey readers over to the McLeans. Miriam asked me to teach her children how to read. How come you never told me about Miriam's visit? I'm worried about you riding alone. It's too dangerous. You won't be doing this again, Missy. Oh, yes, I will. Oh, no, you won't. Oh, yes, I will. Missy. Sweetheart, <laughs> do you miss teaching this much? No, that's not why I'm crying. Then why? Because I truly believe that the Lord sent Miriam McLean to us. And why would he do a thing like that? To bring our baby into the world. Healthy. And Hardy. Our baby? <laughs> Missy. No, please, really, don't worry. Miriam will be my midwife. She's delivered all the babies in her village for many years. Our baby. Oh, Willie, aren't you happy? I'm the happiest man alive. <laughs> Good grub. 
cookie. Mm. Very good. Perfect for a brisk night like this. Here's a blanket to keep off the cold. Don't give her that old horse blanket. You, uh, you take mine, this is a hay. <laughs> no, well, thank you both, but I'm fine. <laughs> you told them? I'd like to raise a coffee cup to, uh, as soon as it's the strongest we got, to Mr. and Mrs. LaHaye and their happy news. So say we all. Uh, so we all. Thank you. Really? Hmm. What is it? I'm awake. They were just so kind and concerned tonight. With the hands? Mm -hmm. Yeah. What about their families? I really don't know much about them. But they're good workers. That's the most important thing. Shouldn't we know if they have families or not? Missy. Lots of times cowboys come out here to get away from things. And you gotta respect that. Still, it seems like such a lonely life. You're gonna be a wonderful mother. <laughs> Figure they all by the lonesome. Let's make me rich today. Willie says you know the good book. Sunday mornings, my husband and I read the Bible and pray together. You're invited to join us. Well, uh, thank you, Miss LaHaye, but uh, I don't think so. Aren't you a church-going man, Henry? Actually, I used to be a preacher. A preacher? Yeah, well, the Lord giveth, and the Lord taketh away. What did he take away from you? Something very special. My wife. Reshoe this horse. Yes, boss. <laughs> Morning, Mrs. McLean. Mr. Lehay. You and Missy going into town today? Yes, we are. Mrs. McLean, I know when we first met, I was... Out here. Neighbors need one another, Mr. LaHaye. Oh, I couldn't agree more. Please. Thank you. Take it up. 
You make it look so easy, Sonny. Well, practice lots of hours to make it look like that. Okay, come here. Remember how I showed you? You coil it in your left hand. That. Make sure there ain't no kinks in the line. This is the noose. Okay? Mm -hmm. See what you got. Loosen your wrist. When you're ready, cast it off. Oh, missed again. It's all right, keep practicing. Get another rope. Good day. I'm Missy LaHaye. He seems like a nice boy. My brother. I'm glad to hear that he has family. I've been a little worried about him. He's fine. And your mother and father? They're gone. No offense, ma'am, but it ain't your business worrying about someone's not your kin. It's just Christian charity, Mr. Huff. Hope we're not interrupting you, ma'am. What do you want, Trent? I think you better get saddled up. We got some riding to do. Sonny! I did it! I wrote the post! Gotta go now. Behave yourself. Keep practicing. You'll be back, though. You know it? Got my rope. Sonny gone a lot. It's his job. He's making money so we can have a ranch of our own someday. He sounds like a very good brother. Got yourself a strong breed. And hey, we'll know more after roundup. Let's call it a day. Now, children, and Mr. McLean, I want you to write these letters on your slates and then sound them out. And when you know them, you'll have mastered the entire alphabet. Help each other out now. The weather's turning cold. And Sharp Claw in his camp will be leaving tomorrow, and he probably shouldn't get a chill riding over. So this is my last class for a while. The children have learned much from you, Mrs. LaHaye. at it, Mr. McLean. Having a turbulent time finding a word that starts with a X. <laughs> that is a difficult letter. Sean's always used an X to sign his name. Well, not for much longer. Will be coming soon. Now remember, really sound out the words with them. Now when you come back, they'll be ready for the advanced readers. I'll keep them on it. Good. God go with you and your family, Shopclaw. Thank you. Miriam, I'll be seeing you. Yes, you will. <laughs> Safe travel. Bye. Willie and the ranch hands have worked hard to ensure the livestock survive the long winter. Cookie and I have prepared the soil for a large garden next spring. 
I so enjoy his companionship. Ben is cooking. Yeah, I just might make a, a sweet tater patch. Yeah. We have large potatoes in here. It's all coming together. It's beginning to feel like home. Now, as we wait for snow, the ranch hands have time to go into town for some well-deserved relaxation. Don't tell us what you got. How many? Three. Oh, three cards. As for Willie, he still works harder than anyone. Maybe more now, knowing the baby's coming. As we prepare for winter, I'm reminded of Isaiah preparing the way for our Savior's birth. And I think warmly of all of you as Christmas approaches. You warm enough? I'm fine. Why are you always so warm? Even your feet. Well, someone's got to warm the icy toes of yours. <laughs> oh, I guess that's why we're a perfect match. The sky looks like snow. We're lucky it held off this long. You know, I was thinking today, this is going to be our first Christmas in this house, really. I bet you miss your family. All those family traditions you talk about. Yeah, sure, I miss them. But we'll start new traditions here. Well, with the weather settling in, this might be our last chance to get into town for a while. Better tell Santa what you want for Christmas. No, nothing store-bought. That would be just a waste of money. Well, what then? All I want for Christmas is to be surrounded by the people we care about. Mm. This here's mine. Uh, no. <laughs> you got the watch. I got the watch because mine broke. It's a practical thing. I have to know the time in order to steal. Give me more money. No. You got two brooches and a watch and I don't got none of that. Got two salt and pepper shaker and uh... You ever wish you had a place to call your own? Ben? This is LaHaye would like to say something. Well, as you all know, Christmas will be here before we know it. Santa Claus will never find us all the way out here, I bet. They will if my wife has anything to say about it. Willie and I would like to cordially invite you all to Christmas dinner. Unless you have other places to be. Well, then that settles it. Christmas dinner with all the trimmings. Trimmings? Now, where do you rustle up some of those? Well, I was hoping you might help me, Cookie. <laughs> I got that. Mrs. LaHaye, Mrs. LaHaye! Jeff, what is it? Mrs. LaHaye, I got something from Sonny. What's it say? Not sure. 
Come here. Dear little brother, it's real hot here. I'll bring you some beans that jump all by themselves. Stay good, and I'll see you after Christmas. Sunny. Let's be going, Missy. Well, thank you, Mrs. LaHaye. Got one speed. Running. By the time this arrives, I expect it will be nigh on to Christmas. I think on how long the world lay in darkness before the light of the world was born in that humble little stable. We have been blessed to receive his light. Not only to live in hope ourselves, but to take hope to others. I am sending you something which I know you'll remember from many Christmases past. May it start a new tradition in the LaHaye household and remind you we are there in spirit, sharing your first Christmas on the ranch. And know we will miss you, but our hearts are forever knit together in love. I don't understand why Willie had to go into town on Christmas Eve. Well, I'm sure he'll be along shortly, ma'am. Wow. Willie LaHaye, where have you been? It's Christmas Eve. I know. There's going to be one more for Christmas, Missy. Merry Christmas, Mrs. LaHaye. Merry Christmas, Jeff. <laughs> Please come in, come in. There's just one thing missing. This star? stood on top of every Christmas tree we had when I was growing up. Go ahead. Here you go, little man. Thank you. Mrs. LaHaye, this is the finest Christmas dinner I've had in many a year. Many a year is the best one I ever had. <laughs> well, thank you, but I couldn't have done it without Cookie. <laughs> well, thank you, ma'am. How's it time to open the presents? Presents? Yes, Jeff, mm -hmm. I think now it's time to open presents. All right, let's see, uh, fan. Scotty. Mm -hmm. Henry. And Jet. Oh, me. And Cookie. <laughs> well, go ahead, open them up.
Thank you, Miss Lay. This is the best Christmas I ever had. Me too. What is this, Scotty? This is the first Christmas present I ever got. Well, gentlemen, I know how you all feel about Bible reading, but it wouldn't be Christmas without it. So, you are welcome to stay, but if you want to leave... I, I believe I'd like to stay, Mom. Yeah. I'd like to stay, too. Me, too, ma'am. Gospel according to Luke. And so, Joseph went up from Galilee to the city of Nazareth, to Judea, to be enrolled with Mary, his betrothed, who was with child. And while they were there, the time came for her to be delivered. And she gave birth to her firstborn son. And she wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger. And an angel of the Lord appeared above them. And the glory of the Lord shone around them. And they were filled with fear. And the angel said to them, Be not afraid, for behold, I bring you good news of a great joy which will come to all the people. For unto you this day is born in the city of David, the Savior, who is Christ the Lord. Amen. Oh, isn't that sweet? There's nothing good and decent with you guys. Hey, Mason, come on. Let's give him some privacy. Oh, well, that's just real nice of you, Trent. Sit in. Hey, we're uh, just about to leave. Uh, I'm out. Oh, come on, Scotty. Just a few more hands. I can win it all back. I feel it. Uh, let's go, Finn. You're almost out of money anyway. Oh, well, he doesn't pay you. Well, like all cowboys, we get paid when the cattle is sold. No, no, no. Mr. LaHaye pay us anyway. He dig up a tin of dollar bills just to pay us. It's like a, a, a buried treasure. <laughs> Don't listen to him. He's drunk. Now, come on, Finn. like buried treasure. Oh, well, Henry's going to Sunday morning meeting. Well, maybe I should be going too. 
Believing the way they does makes them the way they is. It bides looking into sometime. Henry, will you be so kind as to lead us in prayer? I don't know, ma'am. I'm, I'm afraid I'm out of practice. Kinda, kinda hard to start. It's okay to stumble. He's ready to catch you. It's open to everyone on Sunday. Finn! Oh, I'm so happy to see you. Please come in. Sorry, boss. You have to jump on me. What do you want? I want your money. Let's go. Follow him. Get up. Move it out. Hey there, come on. Let's go. Come on. Come on, come on. Good Sunday morning to y'all. Sonny? Jeff. I didn't know. I thought she was in town. What you doing? Ain't this sweet. All right, all of you sit down. Come on. You too, kid. Just do as the man says. I'll just go over and get my treasure map. Leave her alone! Now, I missed on purpose, but I won't do it twice. Please, you can see she's expected. So am I. I'm expecting to come back here with more money than I left with. <laughs> I don't know what makes you think that there's any money. Well, your Norwegian cowpoke has a tendency to run off at the mouth after a couple of pints, showing off his money and bragging about how his boss has a treasure buried on his land. Time up. You do as he says, Missy. You'll be all right. You remember when we dug that hole? I think I remember. You'll be fine. All right. Enough said. Let's make me rich today. Yeah. I need something to dig with. Well, then, use your hands. Make it quick. Is that it or not? Well, then, toss it over. to show me where the rest of the money is. But you, you have all the money. There is no more. No, I don't have all the money. Is that Norwegian? He wasn't spending silver. He was spending cash.
I could just about eat me a whole side of beef right now. Well, if you turn me loose, I'll cook you whatever you want, like rats do. Oh, now how stupid you think I am? Working for Trent, ain't you? Equal partners is what we is. That right, Sonny? You equal partners with these lowlifes? Shut your mouth! <laughs> Ooh. What'd you tell your brother, Sonny? What'd you tell him what you do to make money? Tell him all you do is rob innocent people. Probably been involved in a murder or two. That's a lie. Tell him he's wrong, Sonny. You ain't never killed nobody. Tell him, Sonny. Te tell him you ain't like these other bad men. I ain't never killed nobody. Never. Don't you see? I'm doing this for us, Jeff. Our future, you and me, and the life we're trying to have. No, Sonny. Can't mean that. What would Mom and Pa say about your thieving ways? Oh, they'd say good for you, Sonny. I'm trying to make a life for you and your little brother. So you think... They're looking down from heaven right now, and they're proud of you. Aren't you tired of living in that boarding house? Huh? No place that's really yours? I want a better life for us, Jeff. That's why I'm doing this. This folks my friend, Sonny. Mrs. LaHaye been teaching me to read. Mr. LaHaye fetches me for the Sunday meetings, and he's teaching me ranching. These are the kind of people things always work out for. They'll be fine. We ain't taking nothing from them. They can't get back ten times over. When this is over, you and me can spend all the time you want together. for this? No. I missed on purpose. I won't do it twice. Shooting a man's a different story. A good Christian woman like yourself wouldn't hurt anyone. So what you gonna do? That's two more shots. Trent, what did you do? Where is she? Go get her! Go find her! What are you doing in here? It's all right, Jack. I will. I will, Jack. Get her! Jack, it's all right. Get her. Listen get to me. You. Listen to me. I will, Jack. What did you do with that girl? Where is she? It's all right. It's all right, Jack. It's all right. 
Where is she, Trent? You better tell me she ain't hurt or so help me. Stand up slowly. Drop your gun, Sonny, or he's dead. Missy. Missy? Sonny, go cut Willie loose, and don't you so much as nick him. Find it hard to believe you got the drop on Trent. I got his gun and his dignity. Missy, pick up the gun and move away from him. Looks like you got me. Sonny, tie him up, just like you did us. And maybe we'll ask the law to spare your life. Here, let me help you with that, Sonny. Sonny! It's okay. Just don't go away, Sonny. Go. Don't go away. Fix him up, won't you? He wouldn't have hurt you. Oh, I would fix him if I could. I, I knew he wouldn't hurt me. I'm so sorry for what I've done, ma'am. Please forgive me. Don't hold my deeds against him. He's got no one now. He's got nobody. Oh, no, forgiveness is yours, Sonny. He'll be with us now, I promise. grew up to be a man that Pa would be proud of. You hear me, Jeff? I will. And you promise me you won't spend your days missing me. Ask me no questions. I'll tell you no lies. <laughs> <laughs> I'll pray for you, Sonny. Now don't go wasting your prayers on me, ma'am. I done too many bad things for God to be forgiven. Long ago, there was a thief left on a cross to die, just like you, Sonny. But then he heard the glorious words of the Lord about redemption. And then he knew that very day he was going to be in paradise. He's waiting for you, Sonny. You go with God. Thou anointest my head with oil, and my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. part of our family now. Yep. And someday you must have taken a little name. Well, I'd be fine with that, too. That would be nice, Willie. We are going to need a bigger house. 
I was thinking I could knock out this back wall. Maybe put in a bedroom or two. Maybe... <sighs> Willie. Yeah? I think maybe you should put your boots back on. It's time. But Miriam said we were still a few weeks away. No, I think you best be getting Miriam. Now! What's the matter? You're gonna sleep in the bunkhouse tonight, Jeff? Just like a real cowboy. I'm having the baby. Maybe I'll go uh, check on this cow. Okay, sure. I'll go with you. Uh, maybe I'll wait a little bit. Okay. Yeah, I'll wait. It ain't your first bone you're worrying about. Now quit it. You're making the boss crazy. It's gotten awfully quiet in there. deciding what to name him. I was thinking... Matthew. After your brother. Matthew, Isaiah, LaHaye. Maddie. It fits. She needs her rest. It's all right, Miriam. You can come closer. <laughs> I remember thinking that day we had finally reached the end of our journey. But now I know that the journey's long and lasts a lifetime. Each day on the ranch, I am reminded of God's plan in the never-ending circle of life. sons grow bigger and stronger each day. Matthew has your eyes and hopes to see his granddaddy soon. Bye, Henry. Jeff has thrived, and Willie and I are very proud he has taken the name of LaHaye. Bye-bye, Scotty. herd has increased by another 40 head, and Willie and the ranch hands are driving some of them to the market.
The garden has given us a bounty of vegetables to put up for the winter. Who knows what the next year will bring? I am confident the love of God and family will light our path, and a renewed faith in the words, for everything there is a season and a time for every matter under heaven. Thank you.